Hi, welcome to the Teacher Education Program for Africa. My name is Alu Barry, and this is episode 2C, the third episode on Bloom's Taxonomy. Um, I think this will be a total of four episodes. The last one will be on um, questioning because Bloom's Taxonomy also happens to be a very effective tool for designing questions. Okay, so uh, we'll be focusing on giving general tips on how to use the Bloom's Taxonomy while planning your lessons and delivering your lessons and assessing those lessons okay um, what blooms taxonomy if you use it well following these tips is that you tie in your planning before you you teach your lesson how you deliver your lesson and how you assess whether or not you've achieved the outcomes that you decided upon in your planning right um, so we'll go through the tips there are a total of eight tips actually nine tips I just added this one which is actually very important um, so we'll go through them one after, um, in in order, so not in order actually, and then uh, these are like a few steps you can take, general steps on using the Bloom's taxonomy. Okay, so the first um, tip is for for you to make sure you use active verbs. Okay, so what are active verbs? These are like action verbs. So for example, um, an active verb can be. Um, by the end, say so you can frame a learning outcome and say by the end of this lesson, children will be able to count the digits from zero to nine. Okay, counting is an action. So when you use that, it is easy for you to see this how it plays out in a lesson because it's an action. It's some uh, and this is also what will avoid you taking like very passive lessons, right? Where children will just sit there listening to you when you use action words. Right? Children will be able to count. Children will be able to differentiate. Right? So this is something that's active. You can actually see, imagine in your mind, children differentiating between maybe um, the, uh, um, the different types of mammals existing in their community or say differentiate between um, the characteristics of, say, reptiles or an amphibians or whatever it is. Okay? So, use active verbs. Children will be able to count. Children will be able to divide whole numbers. Children will be able to um, list something. Listing is an action. You can see children listing something. So, first of all, use active verbs. Okay? One you should avoid is as much as possible is understand because it's difficult for you to see this as an action during the lesson. Of course, you can be able to assess this as understanding by giving a test or something like that but it as a lesson activity while you are teaching avoid the word understand okay now the second one which is actually very important is for you to start with the end in mind focus on the outcomes of the learning right so often what you see teachers do is that they wake up oh hmm, what am i going to teach today actually what you should be doing is asking what are my children going to learn today Right? And this is where in the steps here, I put the first two prerequisites is for you to get the syllabus, create a scheme of work. Right? Those are like steps zero, those two steps. Right? Because you should know what your children are supposed to learn, not what you want to teach. Right? Because this helps you to focus on what the syllabus is about and the outcomes of the course or the, the stage of your children, which is the next uh, tip. So the second tip is for you to focus, to know, uh, okay, sorry, to know that lower levels are easier to assess, okay? So remember I told you the Bloom's taxonomy has six steps, which starting from very low levels of thinking to very high levels of thinking. At the low level, we have remembering. Sorry, let me take that off. Uh, pop, pop, pop. So we have remembering, remembering, but as you go up, you come right up to creating, right? In between, this is the highest, this requires the highest level of thinking, and it's much more complex to create something new than just to remember, 
okay don't get me wrong remembering is still important knowledge is important right because children have to know facts children have to know what procedures there are in a particular subject uh, say for example in mathematics they have to know um, what different rules and laws are in science they have to know different classifications of different things right so knowledge is useful but the focus should be on what the children should are doing with that knowledge so as you go up it becomes more about what the children can do with the knowledge application okay application analyzing evaluating these steps are more difficult more complex and more difficult for you to evaluate as a teacher but they are about what the child can do with the knowledge not just what they know this is what we want for very effective citizens and work place workers okay now um, the third one is for you to keep in mind the level of your children right keep in mind the level of your children um, and this is where so a theory like in, in another video I'll try and do some work on the uh, four stages of development cognitive development by Jean Piaget right so the different children can understand have capacity to understand and deal with different levels of thinking right it's children who are from zero to three years of, of age the way they think and act is very different from children who are say for example age 11 who are in classes five or six year six of their education right so when you read up uh, these stages of development you have an idea of how to tailor the levels uh, the complexity of the um, null, um, contents in your lessons okay and then we have to we want to complete this in 10 minutes so we have four minutes basically um, let's go down in your lesson planning be sure to include means of assessing uh, whether or not your outcomes have been achieved right so whether is it a quiz you are going to use is it a test are you going to give a class test are you going to give them group work to do so you can assess are you going to ask the children to do a presentation or a project just to show whether or not they've learned you've achieved the outcomes of the learning you have to think about this when you are doing your lesson planning what am i going to use to test whether or not my children know have mastered this content okay and then you uh, fifth you have to be sure to share your learning outcomes uh, and means of assessment with your learners often teachers just come and just teach what they want to teach and then just actually it is good for you to share with your children that this is what we are going to learn today and this is how we are going to assess whether or not we've learned this right so this ensures clarity and it ensures children will focus in the learning and even for you the teacher it will prime you to do a good job because otherwise you just wake up and teach whatever comes to your mind so but if you, if you share the learning outcomes and means of assessment it serves as a means of holding you the teacher to account okay and then sixth you don't have to assess every level in every lesson right maybe uh, some lessons can just focus on say um application or say analyzing you don't have to just those two you don't have to do everything in every lesson it's impossible okay keep them around three so okay so that's um yeah so make sure like your objectives are mostly around three maximum four okay and then seven learn from others who, who uh, say someone whose work you admire in your school or elsewhere if you admire the way they teach make sure you learn from them your school leaders these are often people who have had more experience in than you in teaching Government lesson plans, they have really well crafted learning outcomes, so do look at those. In under one minute, let's go up and round this up. So yes, the steps you should take. So first of all, make sure you have the syllabus, make sure you have it, create a scheme of work. This is often required before the term starts even, okay? And then select the learning outcomes from your scheme of work. Okay, your syllabus often should contain what the children are supposed to learn. So you select learning outcomes or create them for different lessons. For each of those outcomes, create a corresponding task. Which activity am I going to uh, use to achieve this outcome? This will be very easy if you follow the step where I told you to use active verbs. Okay, it, you know exactly which activity. For example, if you say children can um, create a what say children can create a building out of 
sandstones children can create the word create will help you to know that you'll be creating for each of those you should know how you are going to assess it as well right so that's the third step consider how you are going to assess each of those outcomes thank you very much this was very quick but i hope you got everything you need